Katie. I just wanted to make a quick video to fill the time while um, my peach pie is in the oven. And I've had this video um, idea floating on my head all week. It is cycle day 11 for me, so um, nothing much is going to be happening here until um, ovulation, which should be next weekend for me. Um, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law are driving cross-country and staying here tonight, though, so I've been um, busy today cleaning up and trying to make a little dessert for them when they get in late tonight. But this video is going to be um, the, my trying to conceive bookshelf. These are books that I have read um, that I found helpful or books that I am planning to read. And I'm hoping to get your suggestions for um, what your favorite books related to trying to conceive or pregnancy or parenting or kids or anything. Um, okay, so the first one, um, well, first of all, the resolution on my webcam sucks. So um, holding up visuals isn't really, doesn't really work that well for me anyway. Um, but I also don't own a lot of books. I usually use the library and I only order stuff when I can't get it at the library. So I only have a couple books here with me. Um, and the first one I'm going to mention isn't even a book actually, but I meant to mention it in my uh, last video. The fertilityfriend.com uh, charting course sort of is like reading a book because you have like a big lesson to read every uh, day. And to me that was super helpful. When I first started charting, I was just kind of lost. And I, I kind of blew off like signing up for the charting course um, for a couple of weeks. And then I ended up doing it just because I had the time. And it was really beneficial. It's 20 days and they send you an email every day with a lesson about charting. Um, for me, they answered a lot of the questions I had or I didn't even know I had. So when I started to see certain patterns and things would come up, I would already um, know what that meant because of the stuff in the course. So that's my first recommendation. Um, for books, the first one, of course, everybody I think has this. Um, Taking Charge of Your Fertility, Tony Wenchler. Um, I actually just got it pretty recently, but I know people have recommended it to me throughout. Um, and I'm liking it, especially now that I am work, trying to work with some doctors and get some tests done. This is giving me a good idea for things to be aware of and questions to raise with them. So that's um, number two. The third one I would say um, is a book I got from the library, so I don't have it. It's called Making Babies. A Proven Three-Month Program for Maximum Fertility. And I just got this because it was the only book in my library system um, related to um, trying to conceive. But it was okay. First of all, you take a little quiz that gives you your fertility type. Um, and it's sort of based on traditional Chinese medicine. So based on that type, then they discuss uh, different programs for you to follow. Most people are more than one type. I think, um, I can't really remember how many types there were, but I think it was like four or five. Um, so there were two when I took the quiz. They said, You're, these are your two types. So I read um, the chapters on those two. And they give a lot of suggestions in terms of diet. And then they give Western medicine's approach to certain um, issues based on that, that type. Um, and then they also give Eastern medicine um, suggestion so that if you're working with a, a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner or if you're just taking herbs or um, doing acupuncture or something like that on your own um, there, it has a lot of good information that way. Um, another book I read a long time ago I got it at a garage sale and it was super outdated I think it was published in 1986 but it was called The Pre-Pregnancy Planner um, the author was Jocelyn Wilson and like I said, it was super outdated, but it was helpful to me in that it broke everything down into chapters, sort of this is, um, you know, so fine, you're planning a pregnancy, um, how, how can you be prepared sort of all around? So not only your health, um, but also your finances and your relationship with your partner, what things should you talk about at this point? So I used it for that, um, and this was, again, like years ago when... Um, we definitely weren't thinking about trying 
Um, but it sort of set things in motion or gave us sort of like a timeline. Okay, a book I just got is called The Whole Pregnancy Handbook. And you can sort of see here, it's conventional and alternative medicine before, during, and after pregnancy. So I figured this would be a good investment. I got it online for really cheap. Um, it would be a good investment because I could use it now and then into the future. And I've just sort of started um, looking through it, but there definitely is a lot of information about um, alternative medicine, which is something I'm into. I went to a naturopath um, as a primary care physician when I lived in Alaska, and I would stick with a naturopath if that was an option here. But where I live, there are no uh, practitioners covered on my insurance. Some, some of the experiences and methods I've used in the past, I'm incorporating just on my own since I don't have a practitioner here. All right, I want to share a couple more books that aren't um, TTC related necessarily, but I have read them recently. Um, I'm interested in midwifery. I'm, I've been tossing around the idea of um, becoming a midwife, possibly. I thought I wanted to be a nurse, and I took up pre-nursing courses for a while and became a nursing assistant. And then I worked in a hospital and realized I hate hospitals. Um, and I, I'm not into um, sort of the dynamic of treating patients when they're in the hospital. So um, midwifery might be something that would fit me like interest-wise and um, you're dealing with people sort of more on their terms, so I really like that. There's an excellent book called Baby Catcher written by, it's a memoir written by uh, Peggy Vincent. She's been a midwife in Berkeley, California since the 70s, I think. And it's totally, I, I used to live in the Bay Area, so I really liked her stories of just the different people she had worked with. And, uh, you know, it's, it's super diverse, so she um, had people coming from all different um, perspectives and walks of life and everything. That was really cool. Um, it also dealt with a little bit of like, the legal challenges that midwives face now. Another book along those lines is called A Midwife Story. This is Penny Armstrong, and she is a midwife in um, rural, I believe it's Pennsylvania. Um, she works strictly with Amish women, which was super interesting to me just to kind of get a glimpse into their culture. Um, and well, I grew up in Ohio, so I had some exposure to Amish communities, um, and I always just felt like they were good mothers, and this book made me believe that more. Um, two more books that are both memoirs that I'm going to recommend them with reservations because they probably they might not be for you. One is called um, An Exact Replica of a Figment of My Imagination. The author is Elizabeth McCracken, and I loved this book. Um, I read it in one day over the summer. But it's, it's kind of tough to read. It's about... Is a true story of this woman um, whose first child was stillborn, like in the ninth month. Super difficult, but there's a happy ending. She has another child later. Um, I just really, I really felt for her, and I really liked her, um, and I just thought it was a great story, though. Um, another book, sort of along those lines, is called What I Thought I Knew. The author is Alice Eve Cohen, and this was about a woman who was six months pregnant and didn't know she was pregnant. Um, she was in her 40s and thought she had cancer or something, and then it turned out to be that she was pregnant. And she had been, like, drinking and doing everything you're not supposed to do when you're pregnant. Um, so this is a memoir of sort of all the conflicts she had to go through with herself um, in preparing and dealing with that, that reality. There's a few that are on my wish list. One is called Great with Child. It's by uh, Letters to a Young Mother. That's the subtitle. It's by Beth Ann Fennelly, and a lot of my friends who are moms have recommended this to me. I'm super excited to read that a little bit further down the line. Another book is called Crawling, A Father's First Year. The author is Alicia Cooper. Um, I really want to read that, and then if I like it, I want to pass it or give it to my husband maybe as a gift or something. And I really like now that fathers seem to be more hands-on and are taking a more active role in um, kind of embracing fatherhood. Um, so I'm interested in that for that reason. Um, I also plan to read eventually um, Ina May's, Ina May Gaskin's um, Guide to Childbirth and Guide to Breastfeeding. 
a little bit down the road. I feel like I'm probably not ready for them, but I'm keeping my eyes open at garage sales and stuff if I come across those books. Um, there's also a book called Our Babies Ourselves, um, How Biology and Culture Shape the Way We Parent. And I really like nonfiction. This author is Meredith Small. So many decisions people weigh, and um, to me it's really interesting how people decide on what, what's best for them or what's best for their families. So um, that's it for now. I think I'm sure as time goes on, I will let you know when I discover other really good books, but I want to hear your suggestions. What have you enjoyed the most? What have you found helpful? Um, and if you've read any of the books I mentioned, did you like them? Did you hate them? Um, let me know. All right. Um, everybody have a good weekend.